Over valuations are very useful to tell us by how much markets are likely to move if they do shift to the downside, or undervaluations tell you how much they're going to rise if the fundamentals push them to the upside. I think in this case, what's going to happen is that the overvaluations, and we're looking at things like 30 uh, times PEs for the US and 40 times uh, PEs, current PEs for Europe. Um, but these look to be shifting down on future PEs to something like 20 times for the US or Europe, and even 14 times for Japan, or 10 for the UK, or 10 for China. So in other words, if the underlying fundamentals, which means earnings growth, sales growth, actually go into a surge over the next several months, they will rise enough to justify the higher levels that we probably will see as equities revalue to a world where we're not only coming back to a bounce um, from the COVID recession, but actually renewed growth on all the steps that you mentioned, actually, that were taken in order to reflate and recreate job opportunities and lift aggregate demand. And by those, I mean, essentially, we've had a huge fiscal stimulus. We've had very important monetary stimulus. Interest rates are still very close to their all-time lows. And we now have something, or I'd say positive pressure, from commodity prices around the world. And all these have, in the past, in, in, in general cycles, translated into higher production and actually higher trade um, around the world. And beginning in the U.S., but filling in from Asia and joining in um, from the uh, the European consumers and producers. And this should provide further, I think, support. Um, according to our models and our work, it'll be really um, put a, a boost uh, or right. a floor under, um, I'd say, risk asset prices. Right. On the other hand, bonds may not do well again. It'll be something like what we had in the first quarter right. where we saw bond yields well. John. And they were sub 1%, jump up to 1.7. We're about halfway in between right now. Mm -hmm. But we may have further upward pressure on bonds, right. uh, not from inflation, just the fact that output looks to be so strong. John, I want to pick up on some of this optimism that you're communicating to us about the upside surprise potentially in the third quarter. It, it feels as though a lot of investors have been not so confident about the, the breadth and length of this recovery on Western markets. But if we look at it through the lens of China today, there's extraordinary numbers in the first quarter, still very, very strong numbers for the second quarter. And arguably, China has been uh, much further ahead in its story on these pandemic trends than other Western markets, but not exactly flooding the market with liquidity like we're seeing in the United States. So it does have some merit as you talk about this expansion uh, in some of the Western markets. What does that mean, though, in terms of how you play it? Because there's been a real mix of do we chase the reinflation trade? Do we chase some of the, the more secure technology names because they have the growth in entrenched for a, a number of years here? Uh, where do you look uh, as you, you talk about reallocating money to this market? It's... Uh it's probably more of the same of what we saw in the first quarter. I mean, it's been a very interesting year. Um, I would say that um, it's been uh, a year when you had to have equities compared to bonds, where it was much more important to hold commodities uh, compared to cash, um, and that it was quite important to overweight the United States relative to the non-US markets, and that actually, um, uh, the main difference in the next few months may that we might mean that we get a resurgence in emerging markets. Um, I don't know if people consider China to be emerging. I don't, but uh, in any case, but Asian markets and uh, emerging markets are likely to join um, the uh, the, uh, the resurgence of um, I think confidence in economic growth that will become manifest over the next uh, couple of months as the figures come in. And they see that um, the steps taken by the fiscal authorities and the monetary authorities everywhere in the world, except for China for monetary, um, have been successful in uh, bringing us back to what I think is really an, an incipient, a new cycle um, beginning actually at um, uh, in the last quarters of last year.